Okay, thank you, Uwey. I am going to try to use my, my time in the best way. Uh, my topic for today is going to be the role of emergency medicine systems in syndromic uh, surveillance. Uh, I have conflict of interest uh, in the sense that uh, more than 10 years ago, I started uh, trying to push this, this idea of using the data that the emergency systems are collecting routinely for other aspects. And one aspect is uh, syndromic surveillance. I, I would like to start my presentation with one of, of the conclusions of the uh, last uh, uh, digital health summit that took uh, place a few months uh, ago. Uh, they have uh, prepared seven conclusions or six conclusions. And one of the, of the conclusions uh, is the one I, I can share with you in this, in this screen. It, it says that the first priority is for health and care sectors to adopt uh, applied health intelligence. Health intelligence represents a systematic approach and comprehensive methodology applied for the collection, linkage, analysis, and use of appropriate health data. Health intelligence is used for surveillance, monitoring, and improving of the population's outcomes. So following this idea that I totally uh, support, let us uh, think that uh, emergency uh, systems, uh, having a broad perspective of emergency systems in which uh, we include what is happening in the pre-hospital setting and also what is happening in the emergency department in hospitals, with this broad uh, perspective, the information that is routinely uh, collected there can be used for other aspects. Uh, here in this slide, you have the list of uh, for what we are using actually the information that we collect that is part of the electronic health record. Of course, for clinical support, for the patient, administrative, legal, et cetera, modeling and forecasting for system management. And we go to the bottom and we can say that we can also use it for health surveillance. Health surveillance uh, in the area of syndromic surveillance as it is defined by CDC, is an investigational approach where health department staff assisted by automatic data, data acquisition or data collection. This is important, that data should be collected in uh, or use it, the data that is collected in a routinely way, uh, can generate a statistical alerts to monitor in real time. This is also a very important aspect of this methodology, real time to detect outbreaks of disease earlier than will, will otherwise be possible by the traditional public health methods. So the main purposes of syndromic surveillance is to identify illness clusters before real diagnoses are established. The, the two big methodologies for health surveillance is uh, those who are based on diagnosis, that is the, the classical ones, and those who are based on events that are the area of uh, the syndromic surveillance. Today, we are focused on the area of uh, syndromic surveillance using uh, the uh, data that is collected on the emergency department. Uh, we can also use this for monitor the trends of the, the, uh, of the health in the, in the community to the trends of the disease in the community, not only for infection diseases, but also for non-communicable diseases. And also to provide reassurance that a, a large scale outbreak is not occurring in the community. So with this definition, let us take a deep uh, look in the concept of syndromic surveillance. In this a slide that looks complex, we have here in the X axis, a timeline frame, it, the, the unit are days. And in uh, gray colors, ways of identifying diseases and in dark colors, the classical way of uh, health monitoring systems. And here's an example of a water contamination event. Uh, in the early states, the same day that the contamination is, is done, uh, you cannot identify uh, cases. You can all, only identify uh, events that can be uh, reflected by water utility complaint lines, for example, that can be a way. But this is really unspecific. As we move forward, uh, as soon as some cases are appearing, uh, Although they are still without any diagnosis, we didn't know the problem, if it is a toxic or infection or what is the source. We start seeing uh, increasing in prescription drug sales or the use in, uh, uh, in advice lines uh, calls 
or uh, we start seeing that the people is not going to work or not going to schools, but they are really on a specific things. As the, uh, as the disease or the problem goes on, uh, people start to have more serious symptoms and they start going to the uh, emergency department or start calling to the dispatch center of the EMS systems. Uh, and we start having in the emergency department reasons that uh, are connected to the, to, the, to the event. Probably in this case, if it is a water event, people will be com com complaining for vomits or diarrhea or abdominal pain or what we call uh, gastrointestinal syndromes. If the, if the uh, disease goes on uh, in uh, more time, we will have definitive diagnosis also in the emergency department. And we can start using a provisional diagnosis that is established in the emergency department. Later, the, the definitive diagnosis will be obtained using uh, labs or using uh, the definitive evolution of the, of the disease and a very clear diagnosis can be established. So in dark, we have the classical way of monitoring and in this area, we have the syndromic area of monitoring. Where we can look for sources of information for syndromic surveillance. This is the list. We are not going to go through it, but we can see that we have uh, a clinical data source area and an alternative data source area. In the alternative data source area is the classical Google use for uh, looking for symptoms. Let us imagine for the flu, looking for fever control or looking for symptoms for flu. And in the clinical source, always you will see that the emergency departments or the EMS systems or the, or the dispatch centers are in the first point uh, of the list where you can look for information. Focusing in this area, we have here in this column what UK has established for syndromic surveillance. And you can see that the, the, they have uh, organized a very broad aspect, aspect of uh, uh, sources of, of information from the remote uh, health advice telephone uh, lines to the GP in hours or hours, the emergency departments or the ambulance, they can provide information useful for this uh, aspect to monitor the health status of a specific population. How this syndromic surveillance process works? Well, everything starts in the community, the patient or the family will call uh, the dispatch center or the health uh, uh, support line and they will go directly or by ambulance to the emergency departments in hospitals in the hospital in the triage uh, station they will provide the reason for coming let us call it main complaint or chief complaint and if we are able to aggregate all that information from different hospitals we can have a, a good uh, overview of what are uh, the reasons why the people are going to the emergency departments on real time. Uh, this uh, information comes from automatic capture and transmission. Uh, and the next steps will be to elaborate syndromes. What uh, we try to uh, mean with uh, syndromes. Syndromes are uh, patients with specific characteristics related to specific diseases in which we don't know the diagnosis. Uh, the classical syndromes that we are actually using is the uh, influenza-like infection. Uh, this is a very classical uh, syndrome. Uh, the, now we have established also the COVID-like infection or the gastrointestinal syndrome that I mentioned previously in one of my slides. Or we can also define a respiratory syndrome. The syndrome is composed by the chief complaint and in some uh, situations with more information like, uh, for example, in COVID, we are now including pulse oximetry as a parameter to, to define the, the, the problem and also to define the severity of, of the problem. So we are able to classify in different syndromes the patients who are coming to our emergency departments. And we do a routine analysis. And this analysis tries to identify if this type of presentations have been modified during the last 24 hours in comparison with the historical record. If there is an increase in number, we have to do an analysis and report if this is really relevant. This is the way syndromic surveillance uh, works. So the good thing is that uh, we don't have to implement too much technology. We don't have to uh, request the professionals to do different things or to collect information. The, the information is uh, provided uh, on real time 
and it can be used uh, very easily. Uh, one of the problems is the syndrome generation. And this uh, slide is just to demonstrate that uh, as these authors in these publications have collected in different, uh, mainly in the uh, in United States and, and Canada, in different systems, the different syndromes, respiratory, gastrointestinal, botulism, RAS, and uh, influenza-like illness, are not all collected in, uh, in the different systems. So each system usually describes their own syndromes in a different way. And this is, this is a problem that we have to overcome. But now let us come back to, to Europe. And I will use the, the UK syndromic surveillance systems because it's very nicely developed. It has been working for more than 10 years. So now it's uh, this, this period from the, from the creation of the, of the system. They produce very nice weekly reports. As uh, I told you, they provide information regarding the uh, phone uh, help lines, the GPs, and uh, uh, we will see later, uh, they provide information regarding the emergency department, collecting more than 1,000 emergency departments in a big database. And this is what uh, the uh, UK syndromic surveillance systems uh, produce. Uh, this is the last report of October, the first, the first week of October. And here we can see that uh, the, uh, they reflect the number of visits to the emergency department as a very unspecific figure. Um, and you can see the weekly variation. And you can see that the, in, the, in the beginning of March, there was a dramatic drop of the number of visits. We can estimate it in 50%. Also, it was a uh, reduction in the very clear weekly pattern. And it took more than five or six months to recuperate the final number. So this is clear that something was going on. Sometimes the, the anomaly is not an increase of events, it's also a decrease of events like, like in, in this case. Uh, this system is not using main complaints, it's using, well, in partially is using main complaints, but uh, specifically for COVID is using snow met codes. That is also an important aspect. Uh, so using that definition, that codes for, that is not met very quickly produced for, for COVID, this is the figure that uh, you can see. Uh, they were able to detect very, very early in, uh, in, the, in the pandemic, the increasing number of, of cases, and now they are detecting the second, the second wave, not so impressive as the first, as the first one. Uh, as you can split it by different settings, you can have also geographical uh, information. Uh, here you have the different patterns of COVID-like uh, illness, in uh, East Midlands, West Midlands, etc., And this is uh, a very primitive way that we use in, in my center uh, eight years ago to, to plot the, the cases over Google Maps, just to reflect that the simple systems can also help in uh, identifying the patterns, the geographical patterns of the, of the patients. Uh, very important aspects regarding the, the information that the geographical information, uh, the, the syndromic surveillance systems can provide to us is that the, if we split during this pandemic, uh, the patients that were coming with cardiac problems during the pandemic, we can see that for cardiac, that are really important aspects in which you can include uh, infarcts or acute uh, ischemia, etc there was a dramatic drop. So this was very important because it also happens for a stroke, a severe trauma. There were other reasons for severe trauma due, due to the change in mobility, but uh, there are diseases, severe diseases that were not coming to the emergency department. And that is also something that we can uh, um, perceive or we can uh, get information uh, using this, this methodology. This is important. It is important, the lessons that we have learned during the pandemic regarding the syndromic surveillance uh, methodology. Um, as we have seen, there has been a reduction in the number of visits. This is universally. We have seen that in all the European and also the United States uh, emergency departments, a reduction in the, in the number of visits in a very uh, important amount. If you use uh, the percent of the visits regarding a specific condition and the total number has been reduced, you can have, you can have false information regarding uh, 
if, if you have, uh, for example, in cardiac problems, you will see that the percent of the cardiac cases is still stays in the same uh, level. So in these situations, we need to change to other indicators and probably absolute numbers are more adequate to have a better information. And also it's needed to create very quickly uh, new uh, syndromic uh, codes. As NOMED did it in, in the very early stage of, of the pandemic, uh, so the system has to be really flexible to, to include new uh, threats that can appear. This is not going to be the, the last one, probably. And also, we have learned that, uh, as probably a uh, way has also been mentioned, it's important to monitor the whole health system, not, not only uh, what is going on with a specific number of cases coming to a certain emergency departments. It's important to monitor the other patients who are not coming, and it's important to, to know what is the situation and the capacity of the health system. Uh, I, I am going to finish my presentation, but I don't want to, to forget two important research projects, uh, two important European research projects, funded projects, CIDATA and Triple uh, S. Uh, you can uh, type this in, in Google and you will uh, obtain uh, good information. The first one is more related or more focused on uh, the, the sources of emergency uh, medical systems. And Triple S is more uh, focused on implementing and uh, helping uh, health systems to implement syndromic surveillance. They have produced guidelines and uh, they are very active in this, in this aspect. And finally, uh, I will uh, I will uh, like to share with you some ideas that uh, I have uh, tried to put together with uh, my experience during this this pandemic. The first is that the, the use of routine collected information for syndromic surveillance is feasible, and this not only feasible but also useful. Uh, the use of emergency service uh, systems information for syndromic surveillance is an added value to the classic health systems. It, it not do to, to modify the way uh, the, the, the health systems are monitoring the, the health situation of the population is just an addition to what they are, are doing. And it's also important for the emergency departments because it's an added value of, of their activity. New threats can be identified using this methodology. Uh, the actual COVID pandemic has demonstrated the need of a more global health monitoring. We cannot only focus on the number of cases uh, or the severity of the cases, we need to have a broad perspective to support the decisions from the health systems. Uh, and the other thing is that the national syndromic surveillance systems need more standardization to share the information between the countries. And I thank you for your attention to the attendees and the participants. And uh, if there is any question, don't forget to include in questions and answers.